And hello once again everybody to some history with a guy who took one quarter of it at a community college and is totally eligible to be teaching others about it. Well folks, the time is finally here to begin discussion about Sargon of Akkad. Stuff was happening in China, but I can talk about China anytime I want because they had no real impact on the rest of the world until the Silk Road in like 200 BC. Remember the Sumerian city-states from Mesopotamia? Well, there were also more people in Mesopotamia that were not city-states. The north of Samaria, there was kind of like a monarchy-esque thing, and it apparently had no distinguishable name. But that's where Sargon came from. Sargon was a little poor boy who had no father until he somehow managed to work his way into politics. And after making his way up the political ladder, he found himself as cupbearer to the king. And Cupbearer was basically just a prestige roll, but it was the best prestige roll. So the cup <clears throat> So the Cupbearer's job was to taste everything for the king. And this made it a great spot to put king's rivals because you could keep an eye on them and they can't poison your food without killing themselves. So Sargon had this great idea that he would spend the money he got as cupbearer to fund his own small private army. And armies back in the day were pretty shoddy, and so the best strategy was to have a lot of bows, because armor and swords are made of bronze, which was expensive and not too practical against a few bowmen, who can run around and shoot you faster than it takes for you to reach them with a sword. This allowed Sargon's little ragtag army of bowmen to rival the kings, and so he took over and his rags to riches story was quite appealing to everyone he was ruling after taking the throne. So once he took over the home area of his monarchy, he went down to the Sumerian city-states to try and control them as well. Surprisingly, he was able to convince the city-states, either with his military, or with his stories and diplomacy, or probably a little bit of both, that it was worthy of controlling them. And this marked the establishment of the Akkadian Empire around 2350 BC, which included the strong economic trade hub, the capital of Akkad. In ancient times and still today, everybody needs something to unite people together under one name. So his way of doing this was using religion. And he meshed up the Mesopotamian religions in Samaria with probably his own beliefs into one big melding pot of polytheism. He appointed his daughter as high priestess and she became the first attributed author of a book, which was the foundation for the new religion's rules and regulations that everyone would follow to stay on the same page. Everything was going great for Sargon, and he was able to keep everyone together pretty well. Sargon's son did pretty well too, but his grandson might have ruined everything. Uh, under Naram Sin, which was Sargon's grandson, the empire grew to its maximum size because he was such a warmonger. He claimed divinity, calling himself God of Akkad and King of the Universe. Uh, so he kept expanding the empire north until somewhere around 2200 BC when everything collapsed. This collapse was probably because those Sumerian city-states in the south decided there was no reason for them to have a king and did what city-states do. They became independent. Uh, this was the first of many more kings who would make the same mistake of trying to control city-states, because it seems like 9 out of 10 times it fails horribly in just like a few generations. Anyway, that's Sargon of Akkad. Pretty cool, huh? Totally worth all that hype. Uh, I guess we're done here. Have a nice day. Bye-bye!